for many, many years, there is the myth that women and girls should not be participating in athleticism or uh, intense exercise because it was somehow unhealthy for them or unladylike. Um, but we now know that's obviously not true. And in the past 40 years or so, girls and women have done some amazing things with athleticism. Uh, there are still sex differences when you look at the actual performances uh, of men versus women or of girls versus boys. Um, this is partially due to biology, but also there's still some social factors that are to blame for some of this. So um, cultural factors and a little bit of a suppression of women and athleticism. Um, the sex differences, so when you're comparing sex differences like I'll be doing uh, in several videos in this uh, playlist series, um, it's generally thought of as unfair to compare uh, women and men who are both untrained because there's a much larger difference in untrained men and women than there are in trained men and women. Generally speaking, untrained men tend to be a little more physically active than untrained women. So when you're trying to figure out what the difference in the capacity of men and women are, it's a little, it's much more fair to compare trained men and women to each other rather than the untrained. Of course, if you're trying to figure out what the average man and the average woman is, then you should also include untrained men and women in your your samples. Um, but the, again, the comparison between men and women is much more fair if you're trying to just figure out what the difference is between uh, maximum capacity when you're looking at trained or especially elite trained individuals. When discussing the basics of what is different between men and women for their athletic and exercise capacity, as well as just their body structures, you have to bring it back to the basic mechanism. So that is the differences in the primary sex hormones of men and women. So if you look at this figure over here, we have the stages of puberty and then adulthood. We have estradiol, which is the primary estrogen uh, that women have. And we have testosterone in the blue. And you can see the uh, the dotted lines are women, the solid lines are men. Women have very little testosterone. It does increase throughout the stages of puberty into adulthood, but there's still very little compared to men. If we look at women for estradiol, the dotted red line here, it skyrockets during uh, the stages, across the stages of puberty into adulthood they have a lot more estradiol than men do. Looking at the solid lines now, the men, the blue is the testosterone line. As you can see, again, the men have a lot of testosterone, a lot more than the women have, and they have much less estradiol. They do have estradiol, and it does increase with puberty, but it is much less than what it was seen in women. So, the primary difference between men and women then, men have a lot of testosterone, women have a lot of estrogen, and not vice versa. So testosterone leads to increased bone formation. So we have larger bones. We also have thicker, typically denser bones. We have increased protein synthesis. This leads to greater, uh, greater muscles. We have greater erythropoietin, EPO, uh, which is the primary hormone that drives the production of red blood cells so that carries with it hemoglobin and oxygen carrying capacity within our blood. Women, on the other hand, with their higher estrogen levels, have higher fat deposition, so this leads to higher body fat percentages in general. Um, this is especially true when you look at the thighs and hips, which is why generally when women become overweight and obese, uh, most of the weight goes to their thighs and hips. It's a little different from what it is in men. And this is because they have higher amounts of lipoprotein lipase in those areas of the body, uh, which synthesizes the fat. Uh, women also tend to have a faster uh, growth spurt at the earlier stages of puberty. They, so young girls are usually taller than young men or young boys, um, but uh, women's growth plates do to tend to close a little earlier than men's growth plates do, so women tend to be shorter than adult men. This was just a general overview of some differences between men and women driven by their different sex hormones and how that may affect exercise performance. We'll talk more into the details of this with coming videos where we're going to talk about strength differences and muscular differences as well as cardiorespiratory and metabolic differences in women compared to men.